It was a very eventful week in the West Philippine Sea, as the Chinese ultimatum to start arresting trespassers in the entire area of the South China Sea began on June 15th. Despite its claim, the Chinese threat targeted the Philippines for its actions in the Scarborough Shoal in the West Philippine Sea last month. There was also a major political shakeup in President Marcos's cabinet that could have ramifications for the popular status of the government. Also, take a deeper look into the Philippine strategy to challenge China and its illegal claims in the West Philippine Sea. The Chinese ultimatum to arrest all trespassers in the entire South China Sea started on Saturday, and China extended this threat into the West Philippine Sea and its internationally recognized exclusive economic zone. China has declared that they will arrest all trespassers and sentence them, without trial, to 60 days in a Chinese prison, with the Chinese Coast Guard enforcing this punishment. The Philippines government and military stated that they would resist Chinese attempts to arrest its civilians, and the United States offered the assistance of the US Coast Guard to prevent the arrest of any Philippine citizen or any other civilian acting within the bounds of international law in the South China Sea. The initial deadline passed with no reported action by the Chinese Coast Guard to enforce this order. On Monday, June 17, 2024, the Philippine Armed Forces attempted a resupply mission to the BRP Sierra Madre, a Philippine Navy ship intentionally grounded and permanently manned by a rotating small contingent of Philippine Marines. The Philippines maintains this garrison to bolster its legal claims in the West Philippine Sea against illegal Chinese claims. A chartered civilian ship, the Lapu Lapu, escorted the resupply mission, modified to better withstand the expected water cannon assaults by the Chinese Coast Guard. The Philippine Armed Forces dispatched several small rigid hull inflatable boats, RIIBs, to the Sierra Madre, carrying additional supplies for the Marines and necessary construction materials to strengthen the deteriorating hull of the ship. The Chinese Coast Guard launched several RIIBs of their own, while the Filipino Aribs were along the side and generally immobile as they were offloading supplies. During these encounters, the Philippines used local and international media to document Chinese action, capturing it on camera. The Chinese were also operating an aircraft in the area. The Chinese confronted the Filipino Aribs, attacked the crews with rocks and tear gas, and used a siren and strobe lights to attempt to disorient and prevent the Philippine boat crews from communicating. Despite being armed, the Philippine Marines on the Sierra Madre chose not to escalate the situation by using their weapons. Instead, they used water to attack the Chinese boats, a tactic that proved to be ineffective. The Chinese rammed and used bladed weapons to puncture the Filipino boats, ultimately seizing and subduing the outnumbered Philippine crews, who were unarmed but encountered staff and knife and sword-wielding Chinese Coast Guard crews. The Chinese did release the Philippine servicemen, but they captured two of the RHIBs and towed them away. They destroyed navigation and communication equipment and seized the contents of the boats, including rifles meant for the Philippine Marines on the Sierra Madre. The Philippine Coast Guard recovered the boats after the Chinese punctured them. Eight Philippine servicemen were injured in the scuffle, including one who lost his thumb when the Chinese Aryib rammed and partially went over the top of the Philippine Archib. The Philippine Coast Guard also rescued all the members in the damaged RHIBs. This was the most serious incident at the Second Thomas Shoal in months, and it serves as another example of China's increasing outbursts against the Philippine pushback over its illegal claims. One incident that did not occur was when the Chinese released all the Philippine personnel. Instead of attempting to arrest them in accordance with their trespassing law, they certainly had the opportunity to do so after subduing the Philippine crew, but they opted to release them to avoid escalating tensions with the Philippines. China appears to be cautious about seizing Philippine citizens, likely due to the increased vigilance of the Philippine armed forces, as well as the US Navy and Coast Guard operating in the area. China stuck to its usual illegal tactics against the Philippines to intimidate them, but it was not willing to escalate the situation. On Wednesday, June 19, 2024, Vice President Sara Duterte resigned from her cabinet posts as Education Secretary and Vice Chair of the Anti-Communist Task Force, causing a major political shakeup in the Philippines. The effective date of her resignation was July 19, 2024, but Vice President Duterte announced she would continue as Vice President of the Philippines.
the resignation signals the end of the Marcos Duterte political alliance, which easily won the 2022 elections, and a rift between the two most powerful political families in the Philippines. Vice President Duterte cited disagreements with President Marcos over a confrontational policy with China over territorial claims in the West Philippine Sea, as well as the arrest of a religious leader accused of child abuse. The split is not entirely unexpected, as the vice president's father was the previous president of the Philippines and often trades barbs with the current president. The alliance was unlikely to last long because Vice President Duterte has presidential aspirations of her own and, at some point with her family ties, had to differentiate herself from the current administration. We won't address this internal political matter in this newsletter, but we will remain vigilant about China's potential actions to exploit this political rift. The Chinese government is notorious for using rifts in the Philippines to sway Philippine and international public opinion towards its dubious ends. The Philippine government, under President Ferdinand Marcos Jr., has taken a more aggressive stance on claiming its internationally recognized sovereignty over the West Philippine Sea, which comprises the Philippine Exclusive Economic Zone in the South China Sea. In February 2023, the president made the decision to change the Philippine approach after he saw photos showing the Chinese using military-grade lasers pointed at Philippine ships in the West Philippine Sea. A debate ensued about whether to release the pictures to the public, risking China's ire for its aggressive and illegal actions. President Marcos made the decision to release the pictures to the public, marking a significant shift in the Philippines' approach to confronting the Chinese. Following the release of the pictures, an intentional media blitz ensued, documenting the aggressive actions of the Chinese in the West Philippine Sea, aimed at intimidating the Philippines into relenting and accepting China's territorial claims. Instead of resorting to violence or even mirroring the Chinese actions, the Philippines chose a course that negatively impacted China's reputation and image globally. The Philippines meticulously records the incidents in the West Philippine Sea, making it impossible for China to refute them. Even when they do, their explanations are so weak due to the extensive documentation that they further harm China's reputation, particularly globally, by presenting such inadequate claims amidst a wealth of evidence. Unlike many of China's neighbours, the Philippines is not easily intimidated and is willing to ignore China's threats because it has a strong defence alliance with the United States. This constrains China's actions against the Philippines. The Western Pacific's geography and the Chinese Communist Party armed forces' limited ability to effectively project power to the Philippines also constrain China. China is taking damage to its reputation, but has few options for coercing the Philippines if the Philippines chooses not to be coerced. The following week will be interesting to watch to see how China reacts to Vice President Duterte's cabinet resignations, and if there will be any more aggressive actions in any of the shoals in the West Philippine Sea. It's uncertain if China will attempt any arrests in the Philippines, but it might attempt arrests outside the West Philippine Sea to protect its reputation. While the Sierra Madre situation is not critical, the ship's poor condition necessitates effective attention. China is determined to send construction and repair equipment, so we should closely monitor this. The other is any progress on the Philippine Justice Department's expected international court case against China and what venue it will be filed in.